What's cracking everybody? Welcome back to the channel and today's vlog. I hope you're having a very pleasant quarantine as, as good as it can be. We're pretty much locked down in my area so today I am just vlogging on foot. I'm not traveling anywhere. Uh, we are going to attempt to do some fishing. With all the flooding there's water pretty close by believe it or not. But there's a ton of stuff going on here today so I thought I'd take you guys along. And one of the first things we got to do is put some olive oil in our chicken. So first of all, if y'all follow the Lake Life Family Channel, you already know. Tragedy has struck here at the Rackley Roost. I spent a lot of time building this run. I thought it was bulletproof, um, predator proof. Apparently not. And everybody that said I should have shot that bobcat the other day, you were right. I'll leave that channel link down below so you guys can go check that out. And we finally have our comments back on. so. Thank you for getting us to 100K over there and allowing us to get our comments turned back on. Second problem we have here today, let's check out old chicken here. So this is one of the two chickens that we have left and she is having an issue as well. This is the one that originally had uh, a respiratory issue that we had to get antibiotics for and now it seems she has <laughs> And a crop issue, an eating issue. So for everyone that doesn't know, a chicken has a, uh, a crop, they have a gizzard, they digest food a little bit differently than we do. They basically pump their guts full of food all day and then they digest it at night and they store it in the crop, which is what I'm massaging right here. And she actually kind of likes this. I've been massaging this for the last 24 hours. I'll come out here like a couple times a day and just uh, massage this little thing. It feels like a golf ball inside of there. I let him free range one day and I think I think she ate a long piece of grass and it's like bound up in there. And so I'm trying to massage it out. And what that olive oil does is it allows that stuff to kind of slide through the system a little easier. And since she's not really Italian and I can't really give her any food right now, I've got her on a 48 hour no food, just water situation so she can process this thing. I'm just gonna pump some olive oil in her using a little old syringe here. I'm trying to do everything that I can to get this thing to pass naturally because the only alternative after that is I have to cut her open with a knife and basically pull that gunk out. So 1.8 mils of olive oil going down the beak. Oh come here sugar beet. I know. There you go. All done. I feel bad, y'all. I feel, I feel, we've had just constant problems with chickens. It's like, what? What is going on? It's much harder than I thought it was going to be. Just the, the animals trying to eat them and all the problems that they have. We're going to get it figured out. And I appreciate you guys helping, helping me out in the comments. And I'm learning. I'm learning. So I know one thing they really love is greens. And it's sad that I've kind of got these chicken separated you know they lost a friend and now I have to separate these because one can't eat and one can but we're still getting two eggs a day consistently which is good watch how much she just loves this stuff oh yeah baby oh yeah you know you know that's good right there so I'm gonna let her eat some of that and then I'm gonna put her back in here with her friend her sad lonely clogged friend and then I'm gonna take the chicks and I'm gonna put them in that little temporary run and hopefully no animals come out come out and mess with them in the yard because I mean speaking of that y'all last night with this lake flooding I mean everything's just coming into the yard and absolutely destroyed the yard now, I just mowed this and it is just shredded it looks like a daggum excavator came in here and just tore it up look at this look at this I mean this is this is the problem of hogs here in Texas y'all so anybody out there that thinks that these things should not be excommunicated from uh, the village uh, I gotta tell you I, I think they should I can't tell if this is one or two. You would be amazed at what one can do, but it does look like maybe a couple different size prints here. See this one right here, that's kind of small. And then that one right there is pretty chunky. I'm gonna say that's a 
you know, that's getting up there around a 200 pound hog. It just keeps going and going and going and going and going. And thank goodness it wasn't there like up, up next to the house, but it is just all torn up right here. And came really close to the cage, which I've had sitting here just in a dormant state. Uh, for a while, but I think I'm going to load this up with some bait tonight. It has just turned into animal control unit over here. I am on <laughs> complete watch over the chickens and the yard, and we're actually going to be going exploring where these animals are coming from here today and doing some fishing. Uh, but I got one more awesome happy thing for you guys, and that is giving away the bow to one of you guys that signed up to win uh, my Bowtech Revolt X. Oh yeah, it's time to announce our winner of the Revolt X, the bow that I built just for one of you. Well, I built it to be my dream bow, but one of you is getting it. So first of all, let's just take a peek. Oh yeah, hey, that looks good y'all, holy dad. Gun, that thing is light too. Yeah, it's got nothing on it, but goodness gracious. Shoot! Deep woods camoed out, good and green accents. This is the Revolt X 33 inch axle to axle with the deadlock cams to keep you tuned up. And it's got 60 pounds of draw on it. So this is gonna go to Trevor McCarthy. Trevor, thank you for hanging out here on the channel and Bowtech is gonna be in contact with you via email to get this bow to your doorstep. But first, I'm going to sign it. I think I'm gonna sign it right here on the front of the riser. So whatever animal you're pointing at, just knows that you know, I got a little assist on it. L, F, G. And we'll draw a little arrow right here. And we'll put a little fish hook down here. I don't know, you know, gave it a little decoration. So Trevor, congratulations, my friend. This bow is coming to you. Trevor, I hope you enjoy that new bow. We're gonna try to make a rope fly now. Never done it. The fishing is so weird right now around where I live because there's so much flooding and the bass fishing is really tough. I just made some bass fishing uh, videos and I, I had to travel a little bit to, to go make them and find some clear water that the fish were, uh, were catchable in. But around here, especially being locked down right now, uh, I, I gotta go, I gotta fish, you know? I mean, it's just in my system. I did this a little bit in high school with some friends. I watched them do it and it was really cool. And basically what you do is you make a, a fly using like yarn or rope. You throw it out there and I, I get gar that do this all the time on bass lures. You'll, you'll see them swimming right next to the boat and you'll pitch your little lure out there and you just keep it like right uh, under the surface and they'll come up and grab it. Now you can't catch them because they have really hard mouths and they have rows of teeth but what that does with the rope or the yarn is, is it acts like Velcro. They're little sticky tiny villiform teeth. They just clamp onto that thing, sticks to the rope and they become stuck and you just kind of gingerly pull in the line and get them in, hopefully land them. So what I'm gonna attempt to do is take a fly, like a big bass fly, I'm gonna cut a piece of rope, and I'm gonna attempt to tie it onto here and see what this turns into. Well, wow, there's a bird making a nest in my garage in uh, a baby swing. It's a warbler. I swear, the wildlife, the wildlife here is strong. Wow, it's like a horsetail. I have about half a clue of what I'm doing. Okay, this right here might be one of the ugliest flies ever tied. I don't even know if it's truly tied. I'm just taking a little brush here, a little wire brush, and I'm just fuzzing it out. You know? So that's just uh, just nylon rope on what was a like popping bass fly where the cork popped off and now it is a ugly uh, Santa Claus beard on crack fly is what that is and I added a little mylar in there as well I think the the gar should be swimming around shallow that's really the only option we have right now we, we can catch carp and we could catch gar uh, the lakes about 15 feet high and none of the boat ramps are even open plus we're on lockdown but this might just catch him, and this could be a lot of fun just walking the bank. So wait till you see the pole I'm gonna throw this on. 
I'm getting ready to go out on my adventure. OSG is dodging worms. Gosh. Look at that. Like, it's like a dance move. I swear, I'm like ninja Do the worm dance. <laughs> she is uh, digging up rocks, literally. This is what you do in quarantine. This is what you, you do. do landscape work. We're, um, we're making a rock pathway towards the coop and all that stuff. And she's doing flower beds. All oh, that. Looks so good. Just give me, just give me about a month, and then come back, and you'll see. And you're gonna hire me for your next job. Okay, she's stronger than she looks. I promise. Well, maybe d hire me for design because I'm not doing any more work after this. <laughs> she's over the manual labor. Did you say you just found a snake? Yeah, I feel like the creep crawlies are on me. You killed a snake? Um, yeah, I was yelling your name. I don't know if you heard me, but I was. I don't know if this is a snake or not. Or but did you kill a rare lizard? I don't know. That looks. That's like... a lizard. It's a skink. Oh well, it was creepy. I mean, that's a, those are mosquito killers right there. Well, he had his mouth open and he looked like he was about to attack, so I killed him. I got the rebar and I was like, Phew. Wow. <laughs> Sad for the skinks, but you know, they're a weird creature. Really short legs, um, kind of look like a snake. So they get, they get that wrapped. So they're like, hey man, you look like a snake. I'm going to kill you. But they're, they're just a lizard and they're friendly. So they get mis misidentified sometimes. I'm digging in the truck right now for my 12 foot pole. So this is a 12 foot jigging rod, two piece. I have a fly reel on it and I can also use this. Um, I, can, I can actually fly cast with it. So I'm gonna use that with the fly that I just made um, and literally just, just dangle. I mean, it's just a straight dangle. You're just putting it out. Um, you can use it for carp, things like that. But I mean, it's designed for crappie to be able to, to jig them out of trees and stuff. We're going to dual purpose this rod and it is pretty ridiculous. I've never fished with a 12 foot pole for freshwater fishing. The hog prints on the trail right now are ultra fresh. What is going on with that bird? These little falcons are squawking. These are ultra fresh. This is what came in last night and tore up the yard, guaranteed. I mean, if you look at the tracks that are there and the tracks that are here, it's, it's like a couple of them. That's not a ton. And there's not a whole lot of room right now for them to go because the lake is so flooded. So uh, I hope we don't run into them. If we do, we're gonna have to take our 12 foot pole and smack them right in the face. And there you have it. Just a flooded, menagerie so we're just gonna walk through this stuff let's see if we can see any gar cruising maybe even some carp i got a few carp flies of course i suck at that but <sighs> try not to get bit by snakes because this is some snaky stuff god i almost stepped on one right there y'all water moxin he's shaking his tail too good god he's in there Oh, this is a nightmare scenario. Freaking nightmare scenario. My heart's pounding. God dang, look at that thing. Oh, he's coiled up. He's pointing at me now. Holy moly. Don't know if y'all can hear that, but he's, he's rattling his tail like a rattlesnake. This thing's mean. Oh my God, its mouth is open, y'all. Look at this. Can y'all see this? I don't know if you can see through all the brush. But his mouth is just straight up open. That's why they call it a cotton mouth. Oh, That thing is just mouth open death stare. Look at that. That is freaking crazy. There's some poor dude's fishing pole right there. Probably got taken. This whole bank is lined with danger noodles guaranteed. Sun is coming out right now. It's been cold this morning. They are going to be on the move. I'm sorry y'all, but I'm going to have to just take a punt right now on this bank. I'm sitting here looking at this cotton mouth. I don't even know if I want to try to kill it. It's just, it is still coiled up with its mouth open uh, with its fangs just staring at me. I have rubber boots on. I'm not normally that worried about them, but just the fact that I'm having to like knee high go through this stuff and there's no open area for me to see them coming. 
it's likely that I will find another one. I mean, I'm only like 20 yards in right here. Oof, God, I'm glad that one just didn't tag me. I almost stepped on it. I am gonna take this opportunity to dispatch this puppy because I do have a lot of neighbor friends that take their kids and dogs down here and stuff. And well, little baby Emmy too, I mean, come on now. So I'm gonna find the proper stick and I'm just gonna smash its face in. And this is one of the snake species that does worry me because they are aggressive. They can come out after you and they do so. So uh, we're gonna keep our fast steps with us. You nasty sucker. Oh, yeah. We're gonna meet the big log today. You can see a little bit better. Look how camouflaged it is, and then look at that mouth. It's injured, but it is not topped off. We just need to go ahead and put a little sugar on top, finish the job here. One of the common mistakes that fishermen make when they kill and i'm not listen if if you're not down with snakes i'm not here to tell you don't dispatch them but a lot of people do kill water snakes thinking that they're water moccasins they think anything that lives around water is a water moccasin most of the time what you see is a diamondback water snake which does not have the diamond style eye that this uh, snake has it doesn't have the fangs it doesn't have the big diamond head with the you know the poison sacs and, and the glands in the back it is just like a narrow headed snake and it eats fish it lives around the water and eats fish i've seen them since i was a kid but a water moccasin doesn't quite have that diamond pattern it has that white belly and you can just tell by the head the head is is really wide um they are uh, i guess a viper i don't know they have that viper look to them their eye of course i hope you're not close enough to really look at their eye when they're alive but they have that, you know, that straight, narrow little pupil that uh, that goes down in their eye. And they're just nasty looking. I mean, they, they coil up, they shake their tail like a rattlesnake. They don't have a rattle. And then they have that white mouth. That's why they call them a cotton mouth. And they are not afraid to use it. So I just wanted you all to take a good look at that before I chop its head off and throw it in the woods. Because I'm not one of those people that kills a snake and then leaves it sitting there on the walking path for everyone else to freak out about if you if you dispatch one just just do the old snake flick just flick it on in the woods and that way no one loses bodily fluids hey henny penny you want a treat you guys seen these flying around here lately well chickens love them you want that henny penny oh yeah down the hatch sorry to cut the fishing short today fishing freaks but i felt like i had a halfway guarantee that I was gonna get bit by a water moccasin or a copperhead walking down that bank and I feel bad for like the deer I don't feel bad for the hogs but just having to walk that trail right now and then it just being infested because it's right on the shoreline I mean I killed a copperhead there like last week and if it's just bad. There's a lot of snakes down there. And with there being a strain on the hospitals right now, a little thing like a snake bite, or say a little thing, something like that, I mean, you could end up having some severe complications because if, you know, the hospital system's having to take care of all the corona people right now. So what we're going to do is actually put a thing out for the hogs today. Okay, we're going to take our hog punch right here, and we're going to make us a little trail around where they are here oh there look at that okay i'm just gonna go oh yeah just a little squeeze out and i'm gonna make a little squirt trail going right up to there oh yeah look at that beautiful corn footage right there mmm mmm y'all that smells like buttered popcorn and starburst we got our corn soaking in water with the hog punch all sitting in there just simmering and then i've got a perimeter around it and then like a 15 foot lead in into the cage now that cage is designed that they'll push it open with their noses and then they'll be trapped in there i'm not sure how aggressive they're going to be though like they might not push that open 
I'm thinking about making a like a trip wire situation where I've got a rope tied, it's open, and then when they hit the food or they're done with the food or something, it releases and then it snaps shut on them. I don't know if I'm that skilled in my woodcraft right now, my bushcraft, but that seems like it would work a little bit better than them pushing all the way open. But we're gonna monitor tonight. I just put a trail cam on it and see if we got anything in the morning. Nothing has entered and I don't see any more dug up stuff and the little bits of corn that I threw out. They don't look nibbled on either. So I guess we did not get any visitors to the trap, but let's check the game trail cam. Let's see, we've got three videos on here. Looks like we did get something there. It kind of looks like an armadillo. Yep, that's an armadillo, 100%. We want to check our other one that's facing the chickens because let me tell y'all, at night, this thing looks like a rotisserie lamp sitting on a bunch of juicy birds. And I think that's part of the reason the bobcat just came in here and could not resist. That's just me in there last night. So, okay, good. Nothing came by here last night. That's what we want. So a chicken's crop should really have nothing in it in the mornings. It should be flat. So hopefully our little trick worked. See here? Oh yeah, she's feeling good. Empty, so I can get y'all back on the same food. And I'm actually gonna build a, uh, a new feeding bench and a new watering bench so all the chickens can get used to it. Let's just check your crop as well. We got a lot of work to do in here. And you're empty too. You guys are ready to eat. Hopefully the lake levels are gonna go down a little bit because hey, <laughs> Get out of the way, Henny Penny. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me on all these videos and enjoying the great outdoors either way. So, hope you're getting outside and enjoying some of it. Gotta get some fresh air every once in a while, y'all. Godspeed. I'll see you on the next one.